Bible says, if the people who are called by my name will turn away from their wicked ways and repent and humble themselves, then God will heal their land. I pray in Jesus' name that people in authority, the fathers in their houses, you can think, you can do things and ask God forgiveness. And that's okay, you get forgiven. But you allowed something to come into your house. And that's the problem. When your children then go wrong, you are the responsible person. I pray for every father, for grace in Jesus' name. That you will not make the same mistake, especially the young fathers, the same mistake that David made when he was a young man. In Jesus' name. God is good and God will protect you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'll take you quickly to scriptures. I'll take you quickly to 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14. All you wonderful people, God is with you. God will protect you. But the most important thing and the answer to the whole world is repentance. That is a gift of God, which no one can live without. To turn away from our wicked ways. Amen. Take you to the scripture, which I just mentioned. And I want to take it a little bit before the scripture. Take it to verse 12. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. And that was right there in Jerusalem. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. This virus, my friends, whether you want to know it or not, not it's a pestilence. It's a pestilence that come into the world because of sin. There's no other way you can look at it. We can do our medical researches, which is good. We can fight the virus, which is good. We can find the vaccines, etc., etc., which is good. But the ultimate solution is to turn away from sin. Because these things come into the world, the Bible clearly says, because of sin. And we need to turn away from sin so that we might be safe. Or send pestilence among my people. My people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn away and turn away from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. It's only when we turn away from our wicked ways that God will hear from heaven. I see that people all over the world is praying, which is very good. But it's not good if you pray together with Muslims and you pray together with Buddhists because you cannot pray together with people that is serving other gods. God is a jealous God, and he will not share you with other gods whatsoever. So I pray unto the Lord God of heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, that chose Jerusalem as his dwelling place, that called David as, as, as the ancestor of Jesus, and I believe in Jesus, Jesus Christ, the son of David. Amen. Called by my name, will humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, I say again, and seek my face and turn away from their wicked ways. Pray with me, Lord God of heaven. I pray for my country that all the people in this country will turn away from their wicked ways in the name of Jesus. Then I will hear from heaven. God will only hear from heaven when people turn away from their wicked ways. When someone turn away from his wicked ways at least. And some people admit that what we do is wrong. Amen. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there always permanently as for you if you walk before me as your father david walk and do according to all that i have commanded you and if you keep my statutes and my judgments then i will establish the throne of your kingdom as i as as i 
covenanted with David, your father, saying, you shall not fail to have a man uh, that rules in Israel. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes, my ways, and my commandments, which I've set before you, and you go and serve other gods, I tell you, many, many people, even among Christians, serve other gods, my friends. Many Christians serve other gods, partially. Because they follow the ways of other gods, they quote the sayings of other gods, they read the sayings of other gods. How many Christians did I hear reading the sayings of Muhammad? How many Christians do I see that even quote the sayings of Buddha or the sayings of Krishna? We cannot read these things. Your God is a jealous God. You shall serve no other God. You shall not even mention their names before me. Many Christians serve other gods. And then God says, you shall, you, and go and you shall, before, before you, and go and serve other gods if you do these things, and worship them. Then I will uproot them from my land, which I've given to them, and this house, which I have sanctified for my name, I will cast out of my sight, and will make it a proverb and a byword among all the peoples. And as for this house, which is exalted, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and say, Why has the Lord done thus to this land in this house? Then they will answer, Because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, and embraced other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore, he has brought all these, all these calamities upon them. I love grace. I love mercy. But don't you forget that God is a God of justice as well. And when we turn to God and we ask forgiveness, He forgives us in Jesus' name. But we should also definitely turn away from our wicked ways. How many Christians show water in a divination way? And they think they're going to get away with that. Like the other, the other nations do. How many people do the funny things and even go to fortune tellers? They call themselves Christians, but they go to fortune tellers. And so many times, the gift of prophecy also became actually just fortune telling. Driven by a spirit of divination. Telling people of things that they should do which God didn't tell them they should do. Going to pastor and say, if it's okay, is it okay that I divorce? God will now never tell you to divorce. Never, ever. God will never tell you to do the wrong thing. God will always tell you to do the right thing. He's a God full of mercy, slow to anger, full of grace, and quick to forgive. But when you receive God's forgiveness, you should be careful that you also turn away from all the wicked ways that he forgave you off. And ask God to wipe that clean as well. To blot out your transgression. When you repent with this attitude, you repent with the attitude, sorry Lord, with the intention never to do that again. That is the time when God really blot out your transgression. The consequence is everything. But most people do not repent in such a way. They say sorry because it's the right thing to do. To do it tomorrow again. Do it next week again. And you need to pray for strong conviction in your life. That God will forgive you. And wipe away your sin. Blot out your transgression. Because Jesus did pay the price. He didn't come into this world to condemn the world. But the world three might be saved. And the only ones that get saved and receive the grace of God. And that's where we make a mistake. We think the grace of God is now for everyone. It's not for everyone. The grace of God is for everyone that received Jesus. The grace of God cannot become people's the, the, cannot become to, cannot come to people unless they call upon the name of Jesus. We got this idea that God's grace will cover the whole world and the whole world will be protected. No, it will not. 
Only those who accept Jesus and call upon his name. Those are the people who will receive his grace and walk in his grace in Jesus' name. But we pray for mercy. We pray for mercy for all the people in the world. We pray for mercy. It's not good to see people dying in Italy. We pray for mercy in Jesus' name. That this calamity will not strike our country. But we should also turn away from our wicked ways. And pray and ask God for mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray with me, Lord God of heaven. We pray that this wicked thing that wanted to enter our country and that is already here, that you protect us against this wicked thing in the name of Jesus. That you keep our people safe. We pray for mercy on this country in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, have mercy on South Africa. Have mercy on all the people in South Africa. And have mercy, Lord. We pray that the people of South Africa will come to salvation and that everyone in South Africa will turn away from their wicked ways will turn to you and call upon your name and be saved in the name of Jesus. And we all say, Amen. It also is also amazing me that the devil gets so many things right because this virus obviously is of the devil. So the fact that no one is in church here today is actually a work of the devil. You can say what you want to and you can call the devil powerless and you can call him many names. But he's getting a couple of things right. You cripple the economy. You cripple the common economy of this country. You keep churches like this empty because of this virus. I don't blame government for doing what they do. I blame the devil because this is the work of the devil. Because we as Christians sometimes are arrogant. Ah, the devil can do nothing. Well, if the devil can do nothing, why is this church empty this morning? If the devil can do nothing, why does the economy get crippled? And why does some people die? Why does the people die in Italy? This is the work of the devil. So don't tell me the devil can do nothing. Look what he has done. Look how many people died in Italy. Look how many people died in China. Look at the empty churches, even in the USA. And yeah, everywhere around the world today, there's many churches like this empty. But don't worry. We made you a promise that we will not stop having church. And you are listening this morning to the word of God. So when the enemy come in, you see an empty church when you look here. When the enemy comes in, like a flood, the Lord raises standard. And today, God will minister to many people that look now. And heal of you, many of you. And deliver some of you. And bring some of you to your senses. And bless your marriages. And bring about your breakthrough. Even if you're not in church. So even this thing that the devil does by keeping churches around our country empty like this, that's the work of the devil. But he will not win because we didn't stop preaching the gospel and you didn't stop listening to the gospel and you didn't stop praying in Jesus' name. Your God is good. Give him a great hand. Amen. Don't tell me that the devil can do nothing. Look at churches. They're empty around this country, even in other countries. Look at the economy. The devil has got something right. He's getting something right. But now is the time for the church of Jesus to arise and shine forth the glory of the Lord. And that is the time. This reminds me of the time of the Antichrist. So the devil is at work at some, in some ways. He's at work. We get in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 7 that the secret power of the enemy and the Antichrist is already at work. We do not know exactly where this virus is coming from. I know one thing is because of sin as well. But we do not know exactly where it comes from and how it's working. Many people say many things and place their things on YouTube and, and Facebook. But I cannot tell exactly where it comes from. I just know one thing. If we turn away from sin, turn away from wicked ways, God will protect us and heal our land because he's a gracious God. He's a good God in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Lord God of heaven. Thank you that you protect us against the secret power of the enemy that is already at work, of the Antichrist that is already at work. Protect us, O oh Lord, by your great grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.